Hello my dear friends. In this video we'll be discussing first isomorphism theorem. The isomorphism theorem are always considered important in mathematics. If I talk about an isomorphism inside abstract algebra, it means it is a homomorphism plus a bijection. Means it is a homomorphism and bijection both. But if I talk an isomorphism inside a linear algebra, then it is a linear transformation plus a bijection. This first isomorphism theorem, when we study, we find out it is not so important. But when we see the application of it, it has a wide application inside a linear algebra or an abstract algebra. You see. So it is important in terms of a concept as well as point of view of exam. Let's see the definition or the statement. Sorry. Let's see the statement. The first isomorphism theorem is stated as suppose my V and W are the vector space over R. It could be over any field, but for now over R. And my T from V to W is a linear transformation. It is a, any random linear transformation from the one vector space to the another vector space W. Both are the vector space over the same R. Okay. That means the real numbers or the same field R. Okay. Then the First isomorphism theorem state that my V by kernel of T or I say V modulo T is isomorphic to T V. T of V that means I want to say the range of T or I will say the image of T. Okay. If I want to define this T V means T of V then it is nothing but set of all element of the form t of v bar where v bar is an element of v okay if i want to elaborate this statement i will say after then i will write then my t tilde which is a function from v modulo kernel t to t v t of v that means the image of T defined by okay so my T delta is a new function from V modulo kernel of T to the range of T this new function defined it by T delta okay I'll just write it clearly T delta okay over well, here we know it as a set of all cosets so it is V bar plus kernel of T. Okay. One more thing, the student can prove kernel of T as a subspace. Okay, kernel of T is always a subspace of the domain. Hence only we can define quotient space, right? While defining a quotient space, we know that quotient space is defined only when this part is a subspace. So you should prove that it is kernel of T is a subspace of V. Okay, that will be an exercise for you. So, this is defined as that, this is same as T of V bar. Okay. Means my T delta is a function defined as it will map any coset to the same place where my T maps the representative. The function is really trivial. Then this map is isomorphism. So, both the things are same. Over well, here, I am just directly telling that this two are isomorphic, and in this case, I am defining the map and telling that map is isomorphic. So both are okay. In the next exam, you can expect teachers to ask that uh, state and prove first isomorphism theorem. So you should know the theorem. Either of them, you can write both are exactly same. So pause the video, write the statement. We'll see the proof now. Okay. Okay. So now we'll start the proof. First, I wrote my definition of T delta. So, T delta is from V modulo kernel T to the range of T. The definition is T delta takes any coset to the same place where T takes the representative. That is T delta of V bar plus kernel T same as T of V bar. Okay. So, our claim is the first isomorphism theorem then tells us that this T delta is an isomorphism. My claim is T delta is an isomorphism. So the isomorphism means it is a linear transformation. It is 1, 1, it is onto, right? 
so we divide the proof into three part my first sub claim will be to prove my t delta is a linear transformation lt means linear transformation okay so in a linear transformation we prove t of alpha x plus y is same as alpha t of x plus t of y right so i try to prove it so i consider any alpha inside r and any two element from my domain from this domain so i consider v by plus kernel t comma w bar plus kernel t from my domain v by kernel t and i consider t delta of alpha times v bar plus kernel t plus w bar plus kernel t okay so now we know we have a operations on coset let's use that operation this will be same as t delta of alpha v bar plus w bar of kernel t correct this thing we can do after applying this by the definition of t delta we know that we know that this is same as t times means t of the representative that is alpha v bar plus w bar and after this we know that t is a linear transformation means i can write alpha t of v bar plus t of w bar and that is actually same as alpha t delta of v bar plus kernel t plus t delta w bar plus kernel t. Okay, I hope you can see everything. Yes. So now we proved t delta of alpha of one element plus the second element is same as alpha of t delta of the first element plus t delta of the second element. Hence, my t delta is a linear transformation. Now let's see the sub claim two. That is, my t delta is one one. So to prove that any function is one one, we prove f of x equal to f of y. the next must be equal to y right so we just prove in that method so i consider any two element for any v bar plus kernel t comma w bar plus kernel t from my domain v by kernel t okay i'll consider f of x equal to f of y my f is nothing but t delta so my t delta of on the place of x i have v bar plus kernel t is equal to t delta of w bar plus kernel t okay i want to prove my this two elements are same that means i want to prove v bar plus kernel t is same as w bar plus kernel t means i want to prove two cosets are same we know that two cosets are same if and only if the difference of the representative is inside that set right okay so that is our idea let's start so we know that by the definition this is same as t of v bar and the right hand side is same as t of w bar correct okay after this i can write my t of v bar minus t of w bar is same as 0 bar okay. after that i can even write since i know my t is a linear transformation i can t i can take this t outside since it is a linear transformation it will get split over both of them okay so reason over here since t is linear transformation okay. after that we here i know my v bar minus w bar is a such an element such that if i apply t it get, get maps to zero bar what are all these elements the element which get maps to the zero bar or the identity are the elements of the kernel right so by that we know that my v bar minus w bar is an element of kernel t since after applying t i am getting the identity element since the difference is inside kernel of t therefore my v bar plus kernel of t is same as w bar plus kernel of t. so it is simple just we use the property that t is linear transformation and difference property right difference is element of a set then the cosets are same okay 
Now we'll prove this third sub claim that is my t delta is on. That is simple. Let's start. So to prove that my t delta is on to, that means I want to prove every element in the codomain has a preimage, right? I want to prove it. So we here my codomain is this t of v. My t of v is nothing but the set t of v bar. Where v bar is an element of v. If I consider any element from this, for any t of v bar from t of v, there exists some element inside this. Can you tell me which element? Yes, that element is v bar plus kernel of t inside v by kernel t, such that. If I apply t delta on v bar plus kernel t, then I get t of v. Therefore, my t delta is on. Since I consider any element in the codomain, there exists a preimage. Hence, my t delta is on. Hence, I can say my t delta is an isomorphism, and hence I can conclude my v by kernel of t is isomorphic to t of v. So after completing this, this theorem is also important for semester six because inside semester six you will learn the same theorem that is first isomorphism theorem, but for abstract algebra. And based on this, you will learn second and third isomorphism theorems also. So I request all the students to remember the statement as well as the proof of this and understand it well. Okay, so it will be good for you for the next semester also. If you have any doubts regarding this video, you can ask me in the comment box, or you can mail me, or you can find me on Insta, and you can write anywhere you want. Okay, that is there. And also, there is no quiz on this video since this is a small concept. I cannot find many question on it. Definitely, I will keep one quiz after I complete the basis of a question sphere. There will be many question based on. It. After this, there are only few theorems left to complete this section. Thank you so much for watching this video. You can give your feedback inside the comment box. Share it with your friend and subscribe to my channel. Okay? Thank you.